Hello there, this is Dr. Bora Askan, Assistant Professor of Finance at Fox School of Business at Temple University. Today I will be talking to you about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are the electronic currencies that came with the idea back in 2008 with a white paper under the anonymous author named Satoshi Nakamoto that he came up with the idea that currencies can be electronic, it can be on a distributed ledger, meaning it is approved and stored in different locations around the globe so that we don't need a central authority to issue and uh, authorize any transactions. Bitcoin is the initial the cryptocurrency that came about. It is the, the whole idea, this distributed ledger technology behind it started with Bitcoin and then it evolved into other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum. Uh, currently we have over thousand cryptocurrencies that came up with following the Bitcoin. There is actually a big group of people who refuse the central authority and who does not trust the governments and the big government and the electronic, the transactions the big corporations are around it. So they came up with this idea. They started to think about how can we move away from centralization and authority to more distribute this, this ownership and authority to different people. So that's why it originally became popular. And as the technology evolved and it showed that this can actually affect how we do business from the, the business processes, how we do business to the, the payment transactions and who approves and the, it can become more efficient, it can reduce the costs. So from that point, it became popular in a sense that it can actually be a digital disruption. Imagine you are making a transaction, one buyer, one seller, and you give with this electronic currency to make a payment. What happens is a, the person who approves this transaction can be anywhere around the world and it can be a random. So this transaction is actually a mathematical algorithm and whoever solves this algorithm approves the transaction and in return, they get a Bitcoin for that. So cryptocurrency is simply an electronic code. The best part about this code is it builds on top of each other. So it's a chain. That means uh, whatever happened in the past is stored inside this chain and then the new chains keep adding up on. So that kind of makes it secure. So the idea behind distributed ledger is all these transactions are uh, stored around the world and all these transactions is approved by miners. Mining is simply running an algorithm trying to go and solve this complex math. And as soon as it is done, it is the, the miner gets a Bitcoin in return. So this is actually mining. That's why they're literally mining for this Bitcoin and they extract it and they get it and they get rewarded. People started investing in this. They have thousands of computers running in there and it becomes a farm, mining farm. If you look at the prices of Bitcoin, it has a lot of volatility. It went up, it went down, and last year, it even went up over $18,000. As we explained the idea of somebody approving this transaction, and, and, and in the initial starting point of Bitcoin is there's a cap, there's a limit how many Bitcoins will be issued. So what it does is, is basically simply supply and demand. As it started becoming more and more popular, the demand is so high, supply is limited, the prices started going up and up and up. And when it became over $18,000, a lot of miners, a lot of people who are approving those transactions started getting interested into this and they set up computers to run these algorithms, try to solve these al algorithms. So there suddenly became a lot of Bitcoin supply. And then because of the volatility and then the regulators stepping up, trying to involve with this, the demand went down. So as the supply go up, demand going down, the prices crashed and went down as well. 
I think cryptocurrency as a mean of currency exchange, I don't necessarily think it is going to uh, have a big impact or effect. Yes, there's a large group of people who don't trust the central government or a one central authority, but a lot of the majority of the people still want to have the security. Imagine you're making a transaction and your credit card is stolen or somebody does a transaction. You still want to go out to your bank and say, hey, my credit card is stolen, I need help. So we still want some, some authority in there. So I don't necessarily see this taking off as taking over the entire currency, but the technology behind this blockchain is incredible. There are already so many applications that it can change how we do business. It can change our identities, how we are um, uh, real estate registrations, the voter registrations can impact to our supply chain, how much it can impact. To give you a quick example, how this technology can help. Remember how we said it builds on top of each other? Um, Walmart is currently working on a project uh, with IBM in China. So what they can do it is if there is a problem in the shelf with their products, pork products, within seconds they can track back to the farm that the, the meat came from. So typically this process is currently can take maybe a week and then it does not even clear, you know, how they, the business Walmart does is typically they remove all the products from the shelf just to be sure like contamination issues. With this technology, you don't have to do this. You can go back and find the exact farm that it came from and remove only the farm. So this is one example how it can impact and affect the, the future of how we do business.